the Grand Design trailers have a really awesome loop that is set up for an inverter prep, which is pretty cool. Man, is it difficult to find anybody that really knows anything about it. But as I'm digging into this, I'm finding out it's really pretty simple. Welcome back. I am just moving right along on the fifth wheel trailer. This trailer has an awesome setup. It's got a, a solar controller, a 50 amp that was set up. It's got one solar panel on the roof. It's a 165 watt panel. Um, this will go up to 600 watts. Well, I have an external 200 watt that I want to be able to plug into this whole system and then hopefully in the future put on another 165 on the roof. That'll get me one, two, three, four. That's 530 watts. This is the, the line coming from the solar. So I want to splice in. But as I'm looking at all this, it goes up to the roof. There's no breaker in here. Well, I'm surprised that the dealer can get away with this or the manufacturer because there should be a breaker here. I want to be able to cut the power if anything goes wrong, if I need to disconnect or I want to splice in for another panel. So I'm going to cut this wire somewhere in here and also somewhere in here I want to be able to add a breaker. And then on top of that, I want to add an inverter. Now, this trailer, the, the Grand Design trailers have a really awesome loop that is set up for an inverter prep, which is pretty cool. But, man, is it difficult to find anybody that really knows anything about it. <laughs> there's Grand Design forums, uh, there's a Facebook page, but as I'm digging into this, I'm finding out it's really pretty simple. So I, I wanna share that with you, and then I will Hopefully, if it'll fit, I want to install that inverter right here so that I'm really close to this bus bar. So this was all originally set up for an AGM battery, and there was two AGM batteries in here, but when I bought this at a dealership used, they had stolen the batteries out of it and then tried to sell me on a kit, a starter kit, to put all this stuff back in. Well. I didn't really want the AGM batteries anyway, and looking at the cost to replace two AGM batteries that has roughly 200 amp hours of power, I can get a 200 amp hour lithium battery for almost the same price, and it has twice as much usage power. So for sure, I'm going to switch it over. This has lithium capabilities, so that's awesome. <clears throat> My Inverter up here will be hooked up to the batteries and so that will go through this shunt so it'll tell me what's going on on how discharged and how charged and then tying that all in I'll be putting a piece up here where this loop comes in and I will have an automatic switching system here so that I don't have to touch anything I just Plug into shore power and it switches over to shore power. Disconnect the shore power, turn on the inverter, and it switches over to inverter power. That's so pretty cool. So I'll show you how that is set up in the breaker box inside. Uh, I actually, while I had the breaker box apart while I was fixing the controller charger, I could see how that is all set up. I was really confused and there's a lot of confusion online as to how that works. Just cut this loop and splice in, but how does it work in the breakers? How does it work in the bypass? Do you have to switch breakers? Well, it's really cool. So I'll show you that. So here's the breaker box. You can see uh, the main coming in, AC converter, and then you've got the two inverter preps. What it does is it has power, shore power, that comes from the inverter here, and that'll go back in that big loop. And then when I cut it, um, in fact, just to make sure I have it off, I will flip those breakers so that when I cut that wire, it disconnects this one. Well, then this becomes the new main. So instead of having the main here, 
This is the main, which is actually coming from the inverter. And then that will power these three breakers. I'm not exactly sure what is all running off the general. <laughs> so I'll have to find that out later. The GFCI, that runs all of the plugs throughout the trailer. And then, of course, I want to be able to run the microwave. So that's why I bought the 220-watt inverter. So I need to disconnect all the power just to make sure everything shut down. Once I cut that loop, I'll be able to turn this back on and use my meter to test which one of the wires is coming from and then which one of those wires is going back to. So as you can see, I'm back in the front compartment and I'm dealing with all that wiring and right over my shoulder, I'm putting in an inverter. And then I'm putting in a switching box that will control that. So that's the inverter loop of wire that they ran through. It's a 10 gauge wire, it's pretty heavy. Um, this is my switching box. And I have a 10 gauge wire in that now that goes up and over my inverter. You see I've got a 2200 watt inverter. That 10 gauge is mounted right there on the end of it. And then on this end, I have my battery cables. Uh, the black one, I need to hook up to the shunt because I want to be able to monitor how much power is being drawn through this whole system. And I have a little meter on the side of the wall inside the trailer, so it'll be real easy access. So that loop, I need to cut it and run it into here. Uh, you can see in the back, there's the uh, shore power. So the, the shore, the two come in, the inverter comes in on this side. Uh, it is actually called a generator, but this is set up for a generator or an inverter. And then uh, it comes out of the bottom on this side for the power that goes back into the breaker box. So that's why I say I've got to cut this and then test it to see which one is coming in and which one's going back. To make sure that I have enough wire to be able to run into this box, I want this box about, about there. So I don't know which one is which to be able to just cut it short. So I want to cut it here so I've got the maximum amount of wire on both ends. Now I've disconnected all the power from the trailer. There's no battery. There's no shore power, everything's disconnected. So I can safely cut this. Now I should be able to safely turn the power back on and test the ends of those wires to see which one's live and which one's not. Got nothing there. And I've got about 120 volts right there. All right, I put an L on that one for live wire. I'll turn the power back off and then I'll cut these to length and start wiring this up. Passing through now. Oh, I got 110 that way. Got 110 all the way through. There's a loop at the bottom, so this should be 110. But it shouldn't be passing all the way back through to the inverter. And it's not. Well, that's perfect. So everything now is all hooked up. Put the cover on it. Beautiful. So when I unplug the shore power, this has got solenoids in it, and you can actually hear a little bit of a hum. Uh, that was one of the complaints that I heard, is some people were saying theirs were really loud, but this is pretty quiet. I won't be able to hear it from inside the coach. So I will turn off the power right now, or just unplug it, and we should hear a solenoid go clunk. <laughs> Oh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I just went around throughout the trailer and uh, 
Microwave's on, checked all the outlets, all the outlets are working. So, it's worked. On a side note, this trailer is a 50 amp system. So the main shore power that comes in is 50 amps. But the way it's split out, it's going 30 amps to this box. So I've got 30 amps going back in. I've got two 30 amp breakers. That will run the microwave, general, whatever that is, and all the outlets. So that just all fits together nicely. When I was first looking at this, I thought, oh man, it's a 50 amp system. I thought I would need a 50 amp automatic switching system. But since it is just on a 30 amp breaker, 30 amp is all you need. Very simple. So the way this panel is designed, it actually has a brake. There's a bus bar that runs all the way through this, and it's cut, it's broken right here. So that this basically is on a separate run as these. So that this has a loop that goes all the way to the front compartment and then back again to here. So now that I have that loop, I'm um, going to and from the automatic switching system. I will mark this one as to the inverter and this one as from the inverter. All right, we'll go back up front and finish hooking up the inverter. This is the on off control unit that will be mounted inside the trailer and it needs to be hooked up to the end of the panel right here somewhere. These are the two heavy cables that came with the inverter. Um, so I will be hooking this one up directly to the battery and this one hooks up to the shunt. And then coming from here, I will put a heavier cable going to the battery. I need to replace the battery cable, the ground. Uh, it's just not quite heavy enough now with the inverter. So rather than just getting a heavier one, I'll just run two. All right, I have uh, gone ahead and put this battery in just for a demo until I get my lithium battery. And this is the switch for the inverter to hold it down for a second. And it comes on. Now that is on. And it should convert everything through that auto transfer switch. You can see I've hooked up two battery cables to the shunt and then the main battery cable for the inverter is hooked up to the opposite side of the shunt and I just heard it click. This has a delay set up for generators for auto starting. Uh, I have heard complaints that it takes a little while. <laughs> so yeah, that was a little while. It was a little unexpected. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, probably about 40 seconds before that actually kicked on. So now we'll go inside and see how this is all working as well as I'll look at the control panel to see just how much juice everything is taking while nothing else is turned on. Okay, you can see the microwave is on. The control panel is showing 100% charged and it has the little down arrow showing that it's actually taking power. Uh, right now it is using 3.7 amps of power with nothing turned on in the trailer. So that's just the bare bones, whatever it is that's lurking in the background, as well as the amount of power that inverter actually takes. The inverter, according to the specs, takes about two amps sitting idle. So you can see that's a pretty good chunk. And then that auto transfer system takes a little bit. I couldn't find any real specifics on it. And then I also have a few other things that drain within the trailer. The uh, converter uh, shouldn't be draining at all because it's on the other, that top half of the breaker. And that is now bypassed. So let's check some outlets. Uh, probably the easiest is just flip on the TV. There we go. We have power. So now how much is the TV taking? You can see, yeah, it jumped up to six and a half. So that TV runs three amps of power. That's pretty cool. Everything is working properly. That is really exciting.
Now I want to look at the solar. I'm really surprised that they weren't required to put in a DC breaker like this one. Uh, all this does is you run both your black and your, your red through this and it just turns it on and off. Because this wire is powered. As long as there's sunshine, there's power going through this. And there's no way to break that power, to break that circuit. It was just plugged in direct. So I cut it, I'm adding that circuit breaker, and then I will tie it in, and I will also splice in with some connectors like these so that I can add an external 200. So I was trying to figure out a way to get my external panel, my, my portable panel, plugged in. And I came up with this uh, where it actually will go into the other bay, into the compartment, and I've got connectors like these on the other end of that. I've soldered it together with the one that comes down from the roof, and then I will put this circuit breaker in, and then I can hook up my my charger or my my controller panel. <clears throat> It's pretty cool how this Furion control panel bottom piece works. This slides out and it disconnects all the power. So it just isolates this part. But then by adding the breaker, I'll be able to isolate the wires coming in from the solar panel as well. And then I've got this little breaker box. Put this in. Well, it wasn't easy trying to get these wires. I didn't have a lot of room to work with, but I was able to get the wires down in here. It has a track system on the inside of this case that just snaps into, and then I can run my wires up to the bottom of this, and then it has this nice cover. So, pretty good way to be able to control, not only if it overloads and has a breaker built into it, but then it also has a way of just disconnecting when I want to do any service in here. And I have a way now to attach that external plug. And by having that on the inner compartment, uh, there's shells on both sides of that compartment that has a hole in the bottom of it with little fingers. So I can just push that down through. I don't have to have a plug anywhere sourced on the outside of the trailer that can get dirty or get damaged so pretty cool so I'll finish wiring this up slide that into place get that cover on okay I've got everything mounted I've got my little uh, wire connectors so everything's tight it's secure got my controller coming on everything looks good there so I have got everything finished. Went through a complete test. Nice little shake down. Everything works perfectly. So I've got my controller actually charging. You can see the flashing green light. Got it set to lithium. I've got my breaker switch there so I can power it all down. And I built me some nice brackets, a little metal tray the battery and then I can actually put some little u-shapes on here or even cut a slot in it and tie it down with a strap so that's really cool to have this project finished I tested out my automatic transfer switch it works perfectly have a nice little click clunk and everything powers up and switch it and click clunk it goes back pretty cool So that will be it for this video. It's really exciting to have all this done. I can't wait to get out and actually do some dry camping and try this all out. All right, until next time, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.